Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Evan Siegel. I'm new to eGain. And so you're looking at my report. It says, top line for financial services. And I know most of you are not in financial services. So you're probably thinking, cool, I get to check out and multitask and check out my phone. But I'm going to give you two reasons why you shouldn't do that. First of all, I personally have always found it really um, insightful to study other businesses and other industries, and I get my best lateral thinking ideas when I kind of go deep on other industries. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, I'm not above buying your love and attention. So for whoever who is not in financial services after my talk throughout the day comes up to me and, and thinks of an extension to your industry for what I'm talking about, I will secure one of those sweet party favors that Ariel talked about, and I will present that to you. Okay, so two reasons to pay attention to me. All right, and before I start, I want to set the stage for my talk with two stories. So before joining eGain, I was with a big American mega bank. And there's one thing that we had in our bank was we had a very large, it was, a B, uh, it was in the retail part, so B2C, we had a very large retail sales force, 30,000 salespeople, bankers, who interacted with customers. Those folks were junior, you know, 20-something people. Uh, first job, high turnover, and we wanted to do needs-based selling. So we had a, a needs-based roadmap, 30 questions, no sort of guidance of what you would do, which questions best sequence together, a lot of training, but no guidance on the fly. And when you went and watched one of these bankers, particularly an average banker, go through that roadmap, it was kind of embarrassing. They might ask a question, not really listen to the answer, ask another question from a different bucket, didn't really connect to the first question, and then they would go into hammer mode. I'm a hammer, everything's a nail, I'm gonna sell the product that I feel comfortable selling. Not a great customer experience. So I used to sit there and wonder what if, actually I would fantasize, which tells you a little bit something about me, what if we could use technology to really guide that customer through with the right questions, depending on their answer, ask the absolute best next question, and based on all their answers, make the perfect recommendation. And financial service products are complex, right? Loans, what's the term, what's the interest rate, what's the type, what's the collateral, there's a lot of complexity there. So that's part of what brought me to eGain. The second story that I saw in financial services, and this may be a little bit more of American financial services, but I think not, is we would pummel our customers with offers for credit products. Please apply, please apply, please apply. The banker would mention it. You'd see a splash ad for it. You'd get direct mail for it, emails for it. Please apply, please apply. So finally, when the customer applies, they might take 10, 15 minutes. If it's an asset-based loan, it might be 20 minutes getting all this paperwork, filling out this complex application. And then, at least at the bank I worked at, for a large percentage of those customers, Bam, we would decline you. We actually don't want your business. We were just kidding. What a horrible customer experience. So I started to think and fantasize and wonder, what if we could use technology to coach those customers? Because that decline experience really is a dead-end experience. There's not a lot of help afterward. What if we could use technology to coach that customer so they can improve their finances? Or even... What if we could get, before they applied, make sure they're in as good of a financial situation as possible? So, now to my PowerPoint pages. So, you've heard a lot about sort of our, our AI knowledge management and omni-channel omni knowledge management capabilities around self-service and guided service, right? That's what you're all familiar with. You're here to learn more about that. And as Ashu talked about, that's sort of great. You get operational improvements. You help people with Q&A. You reduce the cost to serve. It's kind of a transactional relationship, though, and sometimes it begins to fray that customer connection um, and the, the relationship to the brand. What I've signed on to do, like I dreamed about in my old job, is to take that core technology and move to guided sales and even further to the virtual coach, to coaching the customer so that they can improve so they're better prospects. And what you'll notice, you know, every time you build a PowerPoint page, you always put little subtle messages in there. Reducing cost to serve is great, but you know, it's hard. You save a little bit off of, uh, uh, of the cost. You contribute to the company's bottom line. 
But anytime you can build sales, there's a lot more juice in sales, right? A lot more contribution to the bottom line. And that's what these solutions will do. So let me tell you a little bit about, more about these particular applications in financial services, because it's a really beautiful use case to go, particularly that virtual coach for um, financial services. And why is that? It's because almost every financial service firm has in its mission and vision that they want to help their customers succeed. They want their customers to become financially successful. And it's a beautiful thing, because in banking, when your customers do well, you do well. You have more balances. Balances are what business banks make money off of. And you have a capacity to take on more business. So this aligns sort of your customers to improve their financial wellness, aligns perfectly with banks' uh, mission and visions. But unfortunately, the way most banks do it is with self-serve content and tools. We see this in the US. We see it in Europe. I just did a little surfing, and I found some great examples here. The unfortunate thing is, if you're struggling financially, the last thing you want to do, or you've just been re rejected for a loan, the last thing you want to go do on a beautiful Sunday when there might be a football match on is wade through all this content. There's tons of it. There's Fintechs have it, banks have it. You don't know which is the best contact, you don't, content, you don't know what applies to you. So it's kind of an overwhelming challenge. And what customers really want is they want to be handheld a little bit, get a message that's applicable to them and to their situation. OK? So it makes sense for banks to take this on. It aligns with their mission and vision. The way they're typically doing it, the way they're giving advice is self-service. And the other reason this makes a lot of sense for, for financial service firms is there's a huge customer need out there. Some of the statistics you see here on the left-hand side of the page are quite stunning. And this is not only for sort of those that are financially struggling. The millennials, which are the largest cohort of customers out there, many of you in this room belong to that cohort, actually, are not as financially secure as their parents. They're the first generation that's probably not going to do as well as their parents. And this is a super important cohort to start serving and advising because your affluent, more senior customers, the ones that banks typically put all their money in advising, are disappearing. They die off. This is the next generation that you want to lock in with advice, get loyal to your brand, because by the time they're affluent and they, they're, they're well-connected to an organization, they're not going to switch. Changing banks when you have a lot of money, big hassle. So there's a really wise investment to be made to provide these millennials who are struggling the advice. And when you're struggling and you, you're not quite successful, you have a lot of financial questions you want answered. Look at this list of topics. This is very typical. And if you go back to my mega bank example where you have salespeople that are kind of junior, you might have one or two bankers that are really good at answering one or two of these questions. But to be able to deliver quality advice across all these questions, that's super hard. And that's where technology, AI-enabled advice, guided advice, guided sales can really help. So it's not just me that thinks this is a great opportunity. A lot of uh, experts, J.D. Power, the thing I like about what they're saying, it's a US statistic, but I'm sure that it applies to Europe as well, is customers want banks to give them financial advice. So there's a need there. It aligns with mission and vision. And the customers are expecting this type of advice from banks as well as some sort of commentaries and future thinkers about the business. There's a book called The Smarter Bank by Ron Shevlin. His whole point is banks are moving from money, manage from money movement to money management. So again, that's sort of the next frontier for banks. So the key question is, how do you engage customers? What's the time you want to get them to start to engage with you around advice? So the chart here is all about the customer urgency. So the lowest urgency, which is the little end of the triangle, is where most banks start to engage. It's around my financial future, planning for retirement. But there's not a lot of urgency around that. Behavioral economists tell us that they call that hyperbolic discounting. I'll worry about that when it comes. I'm not going to worry about it now. So that's not the point you're going to engage customers for this deep advice. The point you're going to engage them the most is around that credit decline. I applied for that credit product because I need it, right? You just decline me. That's the great opening to start to coach that customer and engage with them. The next best one is around, 
I, need, I know I need a loan, I know it's coming up soon. Let's say the home, the home buying experience. Maybe some of the millennials in this room are starting to, you know, real estate prices are really high, starting to prepare and think about, I want to get a mortgage. Well, if I'm going to engage with my bank and they're going to tell me how to get my credit score as high as possible to have the biggest down payment so that I can get the best loan structure possible, I'm going to be incredibly loyal to that institution and most likely get the mortgage with them. That's the opportunity, that's the way to engage with customers. Once you've got them sort of in that urgency, the right set of urgency, there are two models that you can use to engage them. The colorful one with the chevrons on the right is case specific. So you can engage a customer, let's take the credit decline example. They've just been declined, you coach them, you get their FICO score up, you get them to reapply, they get the loan, you send them on their merry way. That's sort of an ad hoc or case specific model. The second way you can do it in financial services is you can create a book of business. You take your best customers, your emerging affluent, your highest potential customers, and you give them a salesperson, a banker, and that person works with them over time, over a continuous basis. They identify the current most high priority goal, they coach them, they get them to achieve that goal, they work on the next goal. So it might be, first, I'm gonna buy a home. Then I get in the home, great, I now have two or three young kids, I need to save for those kids' college education, let's work on that. When you do this type of, of um, guided advice, you really make the, the customer loyal to your institution. So let's continue on this example. I started with this story about the credit decline. I kind of, in my story, told you know, why it's such a horrible experience. You, you were asked to apply, you were then told no, it took a lot of time. That decline is a very personal experience. You're declining me, not as some random thing, but you looked at all my data, and you say you don't want my business, that feels pretty awful. And lastly, it's a dead-end experience. And what happens is, I've seen this data because I came from a mega bank, the credit to client experience is one of the worst in business. You get horrible NPS scores when that happens. So, as, as Ashu mentioned, this is one of the areas that eGain is investing in to kind of build a new, a, a new offering. And we're taking a two-fold approach. The first thing is, we're gonna build a business processing outsource solution where we're gonna build a team of coaches that are gonna use the technology that we are creating and we're so confident that this is gonna work, we're gonna be paid by the success of the customers. So we'll take the declines, we'll coach them to be ready. When the institution approves them, that's when we get compensated. We're so confident this coaching model will work. The benefit of this is it's quick to set up, business process outsourcing, you flip a switch, flip a switch. The negative of it is, and this is something that a lot of bankers don't like, is they lose control of the customer. Therefore, we're also going to create a full solution where we're going to create these teams of coaches within the financial services institutions. We'll have the technology, we'll have the professional services, the full suite to stand this up. The benefit of this solution is that you have this team of coaches in your organization, and I've seen this in the mega bank that I came from, there's a real halo effect of that. When you have a team that's doing mission-based work, helping people achieve their financial dreams, that sort of rubs off on the other teams. That team becomes your most engaged, the most desirable place to work, but because who doesn't want to come to work every day and help people become financially successful? So we're going to begin on this journey, and ultimately, we're going to do it with more than just technology. The way we're going to help people achieve their goals, which is on the top of the pyramid, is we're going to take a mix of a bunch of things. We've got the, the, the guided coaching, the sort of the technology tool, which based on the customer's answer, the customer's situation, the coach gets prompted on the next best thing to give advice. And we're going to mix in things like empathy. We're going to design empathy into the solution. We know how to, I know how to train and select in, uh, coaches for empathy. We're also going to include gamification. Uh, there's a, a company called Duolingo. Uh, I actually have a niece who works there. And they've cracked the code on learning languages, and their secret sauce is gamification. So if you can design a solution that gives you points or merit or chance to win prizes, but as you make steps along your journey, you get people engaged. We're also going to include behavioral economics. There's a whole field of research out there that tells us we all make silly decisions, why we make silly decisions, and we can design around that so that as we coach people, we take what we know are the flaws of the human decision making and make them more, more successful. And so ultimately, this whole mixture of coaches, a bot as an assistant coach, gamification, behavioral economics is going to be mixed together, and we're going to help our 
early lucky pilot companies that we're looking for, uh, we have one in the US, now we're looking for one in Europe, take almost any financial metric that you look at, whether it be cross-sell, whether it be boarding for loans, whether it be customer engagement, team member engagement, and again, I've seen this with a very primitive example at the mega bank I came from, we're gonna help them dramatically improve that. So my ask of you is twofold. One, if this at all intrigues you, if you have questions, you have, you have feedback, please seek me out. I'll be, I love coffee, so I'm gonna be sort of hanging out by the coffee bar downstairs. And secondly, if you're not from financial services and you can think of an application for your industry, also come seek me out and you'll win a prize. Thank you very much.